G'day everyone, my name is Hoi. One of the features that Adobe released in its July 2024 update was the selection brush tool where you can use this new tool to quickly make a selection. And one of the questions that I raised in a previous video that I did was that this new tool has a lot of similarities with the quick mask mode. So in this video, let me walk you through the similarities and the differences between this new selection brush tool and the years old quick mask mode. And if your question is, well, which one should I use, Hoy? The answer is, it depends. <laughs> well, why don't you stick around to find out what it depends on? Okay, so because I already did a video on the selection brush tool, the link to that video is in the description. Let's start off with the quick mask mode or the quick mask tool as I sometimes call it. Now, before we use the quick mask mode, let's just check out my preferences or my options in case you're following along. Now you can see I've already got it activated, so I'm just gonna deactivate it. Here I can double click on my quick mask mode icon to get up our options here. Now you can see that the option I have is selected to selected areas, which means that when I use my brush tool and I select say this area here, that area will be affected by any effects that I'm gonna use. Now that's a lot of effects. <laughs> so if I, for example, use a hue saturation effect, that area that I've just selected will be impacted. Whereas the masked area is the exact opposite. So if I use the masked area and then paint with my paintbrush here, all the effects, say my hue saturation effect, will be applied to all the other areas except the areas that are painted. Now that's counterintuitive to me, but depending on how you work, you may like that workflow. So I'm just gonna select selected areas. And what color means is that when I paint over an area, the, this is the color I'm gonna see at 50% opacity. I'm just gonna press OK. Now there are three ways to bring up or invoke our quick mask mode. One is through this icon here, just clicking once, not clicking twice. So clicking once here, you can see that this dot here turns into a solid white dot here instead of this uh, dash dot here. And then the background is also a bit darker compared to the toolbar here. Now the other way is through a keyboard shortcut which we're going to be using more often than not, which is the Q key. So if I press Q, this turns it off. If I press Q again, it turns it back on. Now the other option is via the menu. So if I go to select and then just make sure that this is checked, it says edit in quick mask mode. So I'm already in quick mask mode. To verify that I am in quick mask mode, again, you can see that this icon has changed as well as my layer has changed into this red overlay here. Now this red comes from the options that we've chosen here. So if I just change that by clicking on it and say change it to green, press OK and then press OK here and then enter into quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard, you can see that my layer has changed to green. So I'm just gonna change it back into the default, which I think is red. And let's press OK and OK. Let's start using the quick mask mode. Now, what we're going to use it for is just gonna use generative fill to change this image into a sketch drawing. Let's enter into quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard. And what we need to do now is select a foreground color. Now the foreground color at the moment is white, which means that if I get the brush tool, nothing is going to happen. If I change it to black by switching the color, either pressing X on the keyboard or this double header arrow here, you can see that this is the effect that I'm going to have. Let's undo that because that's not exactly what I wanted. So Command and Control Z, I want to apply the whole quick mask over this canvas here. So with black as my foreground color, I'm going to apply that to the whole canvas. So optional alt and delete or backspace, and that will paint the whole thing into this selection here. To get out of this quick selection mode and change it into a selection or the marching ants, we need to press Q to exit. And you can see that the marching ants is around my canvas. Let's use generative fill in this contextual taskbar to generate a sketch drawing. If you don't see this contextual taskbar, you can go to window and just make sure that contextual taskbar is selected here. Now, I'm just going to copy this, 
because we're going to use this prompt a number of times. And let's just generate this by clicking on this button. Oh no. <laughs> Well, it certainly changed my picture into a sketch drawing, but this is not what I had in mind. So let's see whether the other variations are any better. No, I don't think it's any better. So it's literally given me a sketch drawing, but it has ignored my reference image here. And that's because of what we use as the foreground color, which is solid black. If we want generative field to consider our reference image, we have to use a color with no saturation or hue, but a brightness level other than zero. So if I change it to say a brightness of 70%, press OK, and let's try that again. So let's press Q on the keyboard and you'll notice that the foreground color has changed into the default black and white here. Let's do that again. So click on that and type in 70%. Press OK. With that color as the foreground color now, let's paint the whole canvas into that 70% brightness gray. So optional Alt and press Delete on your keyboard. And you can see that this overlay is not as intense as when the foreground color was 100% black. Let's exit out of quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard and let's type in our prompt again. So we want a sketch drawing and let's see what it comes up with this time around. Now this is much better. Let's cycle through the variations. So all these variations are sketch drawings. Now you can also use the quick mask mode with selection. So let's just turn that off and let's just say that I want only the boat in the foreground to be a sketch drawing. So what I can do is enter into the quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard. And then I'm just going to get our selection tools by pressing W on the keyboard. Or if you're not one for shortcuts, let's go to this icon here that will bring up our option to select subject. I can press this one here. Now I'm going to deselect that and we will come back to it. Don't worry. I want to show you also that I don't need to use this select subject option. I can always go to my brush here and then paint in my selection here, right? So uh, you can see this overlay is a little bit faint because I've got it at 70% brightness here. I'm going to use the select subject method, but I just wanted to show you that you can use both methods, select subject and freehand manual brushing over your selection. So I'm going to undo that and let's go to my selection tools again and press select subject. And now I'm just going to fill in the uh, selection with this brightness level by pressing optional alt and delete or backspace. I'm going to exit out of quick mask mode by pressing Q on the keyboard. And then I'm just going to type in my prompt again, sketch drawing and press return on the keyboard. This looks pretty good. Let's just cycle through the variations here. And all of them seems to be only affecting or only applying the sketch drawing effect on the selection I made. The background has stayed exactly the same, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, so now let's compare the quick mask mode with the new selection brush tool. Now you can invoke it by pressing L on the keyboard, or you can go to this icon here. You can hold, 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 and then you can see this as the first option. We have add as the option here with my opacity at 100. Now this is just a normal brush tool. I can resize it normally hitting the left or right bracket key to resize it bigger or smaller. Now I'm going to click and hold and drag all the way around the perimeter. I don't need to go through the center. If I join the end point with the start point, it will automatically fill the whole canvas. Now with the whole canvas selected, what I can do is press generative fill, sketch drawing, and let's see what it generates here. 
<laughs> so similar to the quick mask mode with a hundred percent opacity using the new selection brush tool it will disregard the reference image and just give me exactly what my prompt says which is a sketch drawing so if i cycle through the variations is exactly the same so let's do it again so instead of a opacity of a hundred percent let's try the opacity at thirty percent now with the opacity and brightness, they are the inverse of each other. So an opacity of 30% is equal to a brightness of 70%. So it's 100 minus the brightness gives you the opacity. Okay, so let's do that again with 30% opacity. Unlike the quick mask mode, this doesn't have a sort of fill my whole canvas for me. So I've just reached my end point, touching my start point, it should automatically fill in the middle. So let's generate our sketch drawing again, press enter. This looks pretty good. So let's cycle through the variations and you can see that at 30% opacity is done a very similar job to the quick mask at 30% as well. So let's walk through some of the differences. If I just click off this, so you can see that my opacity is at 30%. So if I just paint over it, that is 30%. If I lift up my mouse, stop clicking on it, and then apply that same thing again, you can see that the area that I've painted over again has a more deeper pink overlay, which means that any effect that you apply to this area would be more intense than compared to the lighter areas. So what that means is that if you want a uniform effect over your image, you need to click and hold your mouse over until you're finished with the selection. Now, if I want to resize my brush, because for example, if I want to brush this tip of the boat here, I might want to resize it to a smaller area here. But if I do that, I'm repainting over an area that I've already selected. Now, the other difference is a little bit more consequential, which is that you cannot apply the new selection brush tool over a selection. So let me show you what I mean. So remember in the quick mask mode, we selected only the boat and then applied this sketch drawing effect over it. So let's try to replicate that. I'm gonna deselect this by pressing this or you can press Command or Control D. So I've got my selection brush tool selected. I'm gonna press W on the keyboard to invoke my selection tool or you can go to this uh, selection tool here. I'm gonna press select subject and then I'm gonna go back to my selection brush tool here. Despite me having an opacity of 30%, this overlay is actually at 100%. So what that means is that when I use generative fill and I type in say sketch drawing, it's not gonna consider my background image when it applies this. So let's see what I mean. So this is not quite a sketch drawing, but let's cycle through the variations. This is, yeah, you can see that it hasn't considered the background image as much as if I have an opacity lower than 100. Of course, there are always workarounds as with Photoshop. What you can do if you really want to use the new selection brush tool and apply the opacity is that you can make the selection the using the selection brush tool, the new one, right? So just gonna paint the outline over this. I'm just doing this very quickly, but if you're doing it for real, take the time. That is sort of what I wanted. And then I'm just gonna do that again with the same prompt, sketch drawing, generate. And because my opacity is at 30%, I've got this sketch drawing that considers my original image a little bit more. So if I cycle through that, my selection wasn't great, so what I can do is just simply make a mask out of this. So if I just click on the background, hit W on the keyboard, and then press select subject, that will make a selection out of that. And then trash the original mask that I've created, and then create a mask out of this. So just make sure that the right layer is selected and then click on this mask here. And then you can see that I've got my boat at 30% opacity and that has taken into account my background image and the effect doesn't spill onto the background. So if I go to the variations, 
you can see that only the boat is affected. So in the beginning of the video, I asked whether you should use the new selection brush tool or the quick mask mode. And I said, it depends, right? It depends on what workflow you are comfortable with. Are you already familiar with the quick mask mode where you can do selections as you're using the quick mask mode? Or do you want a simpler method by using the new selection brush tool and then having to adjust your selection through traditional tools like masks? If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, let me know about it. Leave me a comment. It's free. Like this video, hit the bell icon so you can never miss one of my videos again. <laughs>